Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Out of the Short Box. This is Josiah McComas and today we are doing a hero history on Constantine. Uh, some of you all may or may not know of John Constantine, but today we are going to uh, go into this uh, leader of the Justice League Dark. This continues our Justice League uh, Dark uh, dive basically as we go into the comic book. It's one of my favorites that's out right now. It's been one of my favorites for a long time. Uh, really kind of bummed that the movie <laughs> isn't going forward right now. Uh, I think it'll be picked back up. Uh, Guillermo del Tormo was going to do it, but uh, uh, things happened and uh, he's not continuing on, but it would be awesome to see a Justice League Dark uh, movie come out. Uh, so, Constantine, uh, we've had uh, a movies and some shows come out on him, so if you're not familiar with his comic book origin or any of the comic books, you may have heard, at least heard the name before. Uh, there was a movie starring Keanu Reeves that I actually liked, I enjoyed. Um, it was loosely based uh, on the comic book character. Uh, there were some traits about him. Of course, the look was completely different, but I'll talk about that as we go into the history of John and who he was based off of. Um, and then, uh, But I, I liked the movie overall. It kind of did give that occultic uh, type thing that John is, is known for. Changed his origin a little bit and changed his his purpose a little bit, but uh, the movie was good. And, and like I say about the movies and the comic books, you've got to keep them separate um, just because the mediums that they are. Uh, they're a different form of media. Uh, so comic books can uh, relay a story a different way. It's a, it's a comic books or a piece of literature. So it can continue to expound upon a character uh, deeper than a movie can go. A deeper is constrained by time constraints. You know, unless you know, you're one of them that's going to sit there and binge watch a five or six hour movie, it's not going to happen. Uh, you're not going to have a correct adaptation. Um, that's just known before. I mean, many people uh, will always say, you know, I liked reading the book better because I learned more from the books, and you hear their own authors say it. Uh, Stephen King, who even fully supports his books coming into movies, will always, always tell you that there's more detail in the books, there's some stuff they weren't able to cover uh, in the movie that's in the book, and so on and so forth, and it's just because of time constraints and, and the form of media they're using to tell the story. Uh, and that's what this is. That's what any good piece of popular culture, any good piece of of media does is it, uh, it it's a story. You get and you got to understand that stories are told differently based on how they're told, um, whether it be done by actors or whether it be done by the storytellers themselves uh, through through literary pieces or, or whatever it may be. So we have to understand that, and that's the same here with Constantine. Uh, he had his own television show on NBC for a while. Um, so uh, just wanted to go ahead and talk about him a little bit. So what type of hero is John Constantine? Well, his title, I guess, the best title you can give him is he's an occult detective. Uh, so he, he's a detective, but he's, de he's a magic user. Uh, he's a wizard in and of himself, even though he doesn't give himself the title of a wizard. Uh, he, he has very acute knowledge, a very, well, a very deep uh, sense of, of uh, knowledge into the occult. Uh, he was introduced to us in Saga of the Swamp Thing number 25. He had a cameo in that, and that was actually written in 1984 by Alan Moore. Uh, so Alan Moore uh, and Tettlebaum and them who were working on Swamp Thing were the creators of John. Uh, they were the ones who thought up of John and brought him into uh, the Saga of the Swamp Thing. Uh, and he ended up playing a major role in that comic book. Uh, he made a cameo introducing himself to Swamp Thing in issue number 25, and then he came back and we found out his name and who he was truly in uh, Saga of the Swamp Thing number 37, which was in 85. Um, he's the main character in the comic book Hellblazer. Um, he, he, during the New 52 run, he was given his own title called Constantine, but the most famous comic book uh, that he's uh, tied in individually is Hellblazer. Hellblazer is about him. He comes. He sometimes goes by that name of Hellblazer. But that's John Constantine's comic book. And if you were to go to a comic book shop and you really wanted to read more about Constantine, that's where I would take you. Um, it's pr uh, published by DC's Vertigo imprint. Uh, so sometimes it's kept away separate from the main DC stuff. Uh, but any of your local comic book shop, Reed Hiller, will be able to tell you where to find it. Uh, there's many of them that are in trade paperback, so I always tell Tell people, you know, if you really want to get into that, you know, purchase the, the trades on it, um, and, and it's very good. Um, 
So his character was actually uh, drawn uh, whenever you see a picture of John Constantine. That's why I say the Keanu Reeves was a little different. He was actually based on the singer Sting. Uh, in fact, side by side, <laughs> some of the pictures of him you see, it's a side by side comparison, it's with Sting. That's who he was told to mirror, and they wanted to mirror, and they did a great job at it. Uh, so there, he's he's famously known for being a con man. Uh, he's a chain smoker. He's very lewd, and he's just very rough around the edges. Um, extremely rough. Uh, very but he's a good guy. He's all these things. If you if you were to go based off his dialogue, you'd think that he'd be a villain, but he's actually a good guy. Um, like I said, he's uh, very much a rebel. He's a heavy drinker, heavy smoker. Uh, smoking is his main thing. He's always uh, usually drawn. Uh, there's a very few panels where he's not smoking. He's usually got a cigarette in his mouth, even till today. He still has that. Uh, so the writer, Jamie Delano, uh, was the main one that really flushed out uh, John a little bit more in the Hellblazer one, so that's who I'm going to go with uh, for your history and your origin uh, of the character, his, uh, the Constantine history. Um, the New 52 rewrote his origin. I do not like the New 52 origin, and for those of you that are following uh, current comics, uh, and by the way, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say the New 52, the New 52 was a, um, when DC kind of hit a reset button, they were like, they basically said, let's rewrite some of our main characters, let's rewrite some of their origin stories, let's rewrite some of the, uh, who they are, uh, let's just kind of do a reset button, and it was a horrible thing. Um, now they did it again, they did it a couple years ago, and we're in the middle of what they call DC Rebirth, and it's basically where they realize they made a mistake with New 52, and they hit the reset button, and they've gone back uh, to the original origins, the original stylings, of the characters uh, that DC has. So the New 52 version of John Constantine, and this is just my personal opinion, you can read it if you want to, but I hated uh, the New 52 John Constantine. Uh, they read it, his story, um, and it, to me it was just ridiculous. The origin we had in the original Hellblazer I thought was very good. He was born in Liverpool, England, uh, but he grew up in London. So he was born in Liverpool, but he, he grew up mostly in London. Uh, he was born a twin, uh, but he actually strangled his brother in the womb during childbirth. And because of that struggle in the womb, um, his mother died at childbirth. Um, so John was born uh, without a mother and without his twin brother. Uh, we, we get the, the reason why that happened flushed out later on in comic books. That's why I say this is an interesting read, and I like this origin a little better, uh, because it adds to that little bit of darkness of John. So, with that being said, his father hated John. His father blamed John for the murder, for, for, for his wife dying, and for his other son dying. Uh, so that uh, reason... Uh, John became psychologically scarred, too, because his father deeply hated him. Uh, so John spent most of his childhood running away or being raised uh, by his older sister. Uh, but it caused him a ton of... Uh, of pain. His, his sister became uh, one of the main characters as well, called Cheryl Masters. Uh, uh, so he 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 was constantly on the run. He was constantly uh, meeting new people, being raised by a sister who was also strong uh, in magic, and, and she's the one that basically got John started into magic and the occult because she shared their family history. Their family history had a long line of magic users, and for that reason, John started uh, studying the occult. He started spending his time, uh, and this was also set in the time, so John was born in, in, in 1960s England, and uh, for those of you that don't know, like again, like I said, a lot. Uh, this was written by an English man. Alan Moore was the original one that created the character, uh, and then it just continued... Uh, and John Constantine is English. He has a very strong. He has an English accent. Um, but uh, John, during the 1960s England, 1960s, 1970s 
England, the punk rock music scene was big. Uh, so John visited a lot of the punk rock uh, group eras there as well. And then also, this was on the heels of England's dive into the occult. Um, Alistair Crowley had passed away in the late 1940s, but his teachings continued on uh, during that time in England. Uh, so a lot of the Eng- uh, England England people started uh, diving into the occult, the study of the occult, and the study of magic. And that's where John uh, came into. Uh, again, I, like I said, he, he's a chain smoker and he hasn't stopped, which is actually surprising to a lot of people. Um, in the early comics, uh, people still believe DC got a cutback from the tobacco industry. It's never been proven uh, because the main cigarette that he was shown, shown smoking was called Silk Cut, which is uh, sold primarily in England. But every now and then he would have a pack of Marlboros or a pack of... Um, camels in the comic books and those were when he would make his American experiences like uh, when he visited Swamp Thing in America and so on and so forth and um, so some people thought that they they were being sponsored but that's not actually been proven. Uh, DC just said it was written into the comics but they never had any type of marketing agreement uh, while he does that. So while he's a chain smoker uh, uh, though John is very adamant, and it's written very heavily in the comic book, he is very anti-drug use. Um, he's been known to punch out and to chew out uh, drug dealers and drug abusers uh, in the comic book. He's very adamant against it. Um, so Constantine and Zatanna, I mentioned in the history of Zatanna podcast, they have been in an on-again, off-again relationship. Um, it has been hinted at in Brian Azzarello's run, um, again, in, in the comic book, has kind of confirmed that John's bisexual. Um, so there was a gentleman named Nick Necro that constantly comes into John's, by, uh, John's line. Nick Necro, um in the New 52, was written as a, a mentor to John. Uh, Hellblazer kind of looked at it as just a... Uh, he was also just a, a fellow magic user. So it's whichever one you want to take, whichever storyline you're following on where Nick lands. But apparently Nick was in love with Satana as well, but he was also in love with John. Um, so there was a love triangle that went on there. Uh, Zatanna ended up picking up wanting to have a relationship with just John. Uh, John wanted to just have one with just Zatanna. And uh, Nick got jealous because both of them were away, and he ended up becoming one of their main uh, bad guys. So speaking of enemies, let me go ahead and give you a list of John's enemies. So we have First of the Fallen, which, uh, yes, is mainly a devil-type character, if not the devil. Um, many, many times it's referred to that that is not the devil, that's not Lucifer. Um, it's it's kind of weird in Vertigo and DC continuity, um, which one day I'll do a, a history on that. But Lucifer is a completely different character, kind of in the DC realm. Um, he was, uh, especially when Neil Gaiman got a hold of, of the Sandman mythos, uh, Lucifer's um, character kind of changed completely. Um, so, But First of the Fallen is a very evil character that John Constantine is constantly in battle with. Um, he's given him uh, many headaches. And then Nergal who is a demon character as well. And John fights a lot of demons, so John is big against fighting demons and stopping demonic activity from affecting uh, the Earth. Um, You have Julian the Mystic. Uh, He fights Julian the Mystic many times. And then here recently, uh, there is a demon called Blight uh, that he is uh, strong against. And Blight is basically... um, the uh, spiritualization of all of man's evils, all the inhumanity and all the evils of man is uh, consumed in this character, Blight. Uh, so let me give you some reading recommendations if you're interested in John, and I would highly uh, look into it. So first off, I uh, Hellblazer Haunted. If, if, again, like I said, most, most of these are in uh, trade paperback form, so I'm going to go ahead and give you uh, the main titles, and if you want to write them down, then take them to your, to your local comic book shop. I'm sure they can... Uh, get you referred to them. Again, if you're in the northern Kentucky, greater Cincinnati area where I'm based at, I highly support Comics to Games located in Florence, Kentucky. Um, But uh, Hellblazer Haunted is my first one. Hellblazer Ashes and Dust, that is an excellent title uh, as well. Uh, Hellblazer Dangerous Habits, which really goes into the character of John. So the first two I gave you was a good basis, a good equal. 
lining where it says John is a superhero, and it's uh, you know basically the hero type comic. But Dangerous Habits is really a dive into John's character and his struggle that he has even when he's fighting evil. Um, so I've, I highly recommend getting Dangerous Habits. And then Justice League Dark, of course. Uh, John was in the very beginning of the arch, and I'm sure he'll return. Uh, but definitely go out there and get your Justice League Dark, because that's what I'm talking about now. And it's just such a good good title. Uh, if you're big into some of the horror and some of the um, supernatural type reading, I would highly recommend Justice League Dark and um, uh, Constantine, you know, Hellblazer. Get those type of titles. They're very good. Uh, the, the DC and Vertigo has done an excellent job with the character because it's given us equal parts. It's given us equal parts of, of the supernatural type realm and some of the old school horror comics that used to be written. Uh, kind of gives us that deep sense so i highly recommend the character to go and get that so i hope you enjoyed this little bit of rundown on john constantine i hope it perks your interest and i hope you go out there and see it um follow us on facebook out of the short box uh if you want to email us yeah, email me uh, recommendations my email is out of the short box at gmail.com uh, i would love to hear from you there uh you can, uh, of course, support us on Patreon. I know I'm big on that. www.patreon.com backslash out of the short box. I have different prize tiers. You can get your own podcast. You can hear a uh, special bod- uh, podcast that I make uh, every month uh, that the other uh, listeners do not get to do. You can be a guest on the show. We can talk about your love for comics, and we can talk about there. I have different prizes. I've got T-shirts coming out. I've got uh, uh, special comic books. I'm going to be raffling off uh, some special comic books, some rare editions, some rare uh, tr- uh, pa- uh, trade paperbacks. I'm going to purchase some trade paperbacks. Maybe you're wanting to get that Mr. Miracle and you haven't bought it yet. Well, you can get it free from out of the short box. Uh, just uh, sign in and become a patron and we'll do uh, some special raffles and send you a prize package. And listen, you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to donate a lot to us. Uh, the first tier where you get the special podcast every month, $1. If you promise just $1 a month, if you can sacrifice, you know, that shoot getting a 20 ounce pop now is more than a dollar so if you can sacrifice one 20 ounce pop for me a month and shoot over a a dollar a month my way i would greatly appreciate it and what am i doing with this not only am i trying to grow the podcast get better equipment get better video equipment so i can do videos and stuff like that no yes that that's one of the main factors for it but i'm also doing uh things for out of the short box to grow us to grow our mission of, of getting people into comic books and and to see the value uh of them to see uh the literature behind them to see uh how much fun they are and how great it is and the literacy is a big thing of mine uh this morning i just got back uh from uh, the local school uh uh library i donated two long boxes that i was able to purchase a couple months ago from a local comic book shop completely full so i'm guessing around 2000 comic books uh some there were some disney titles in there there were some of the looney tunes titles in there and then there were some of the classic titles in there but there were some great titles in there that they're not going to loan to kids but they're going to give to them they're actually going to have their library open house and they're going to say hey the first ones you can take you know, some of these comics and, and, and leaving it up to the library on how many each kid can take or if kids can take multiples or how it can go. But I'm just excited that these are going to get in some of these children's hands. Uh, they're going to be opening them up uh, and it's going to be under their supervision of their parents. They're going to see these great characters, these great stories. They're going to fall in love with comics and hopefully support the industry again too and, and to go from there. But see that the, and grow from it. They can get excited about that. They can say, hey, I can write some of these stories. And who knows? We may have because uh, you hear about the great comic book writers of today and not just comic book writers but the great writers neil gaiman for one the guy that wrote american gods who wrote Coraline, who wrote um uh, the graveyard book uh, i mean uh, a lot of people know neil of course and neil wrote the comic book uh, the sandman you know he he wrote that uh, that that huge series there but neil's one of the best writers he's known as one of the best writers uh, of modern literature today and if you were to ask Neil where he got his inspiration from, you know what he says? Alan Moore's Saga of the Swamp Thing. He he got the inspiration to delve deeper into his writing because of Alan Moore's Saga of the Swamp Thing. So just imagine, you hear Tom King and his love of Jack Kirby. You hear of all these great 
great writers. And like I said, it's not just comic medium writers, it's writers, period. Grant Morrison, the same way, while Grant's written some wonderful comics and he also writes comic books, he's written some great pieces of literature here recently as well, regular books and everything from there. And, and look at what he has done. And, and, and he'll, he, he echoes the same thing that Neil does, that uh, he loved Alan's writings, that he loved... Um, uh, uh, Denny O'Neill. He he loved some of those that he that he grew up reading, and that inspired him. So I'm really hoping that's one of our missions here at Alice Short Box. And if you can donate just a dollar a month uh, to Patreon.com, we can continue doing things like that. I can continue uh, going to my local comic book shop when they have the deals on the comic books, uh, like a quarter a piece or fifty cents a piece, and I can buy them in bulk. I can get these huge ones, and I can begin talking. I can begin doing doing the message. I can. Uh, do the podcast more. Oh, by the way, we're on Google Play right now. You know, we're on Spotify, on Google Play, on iTunes. So it's very exciting what's happening with the podcast. So come be a part of it. Send me an email, outoftheshortbox at gmail.com. Visit our, our, our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash out of the short box and support us. I love you all and thank you for listening to the podcast. I can't wait uh, until the next one where we're going to be talking about Dead Man. And yes, there's a character named Dad Man, also known as Boston Brand, but we'll talk about him in the next one. Until then, uh, go to your local comic book shop and support him. Again, follow us on uh, on, on Facebook and, uh, and send me a tweet at McComas Josiah. Uh, until then, I uh, love you all, and I'll talk to you all and catch you in the next podcast. <laughs>